folks and welcome to Homesteader News. Hey, I got a, uh, a fun, simple, inexpensive project that I think you're all going to like. Um, since we have uh, horses all over this property here, I decided that I was going to build me a horse trough planter. And uh, that's my project that I'm going to build out here in front of my gate. And I'll show you uh, what I come up with, my design, and then I'll show you how to build it. Uh, and it's uh, a project that you can do in probably about an hour and cost you about 20 bucks and uh, really looks nice, Would, can be used for flowers, uh, for garden plants, tomatoes, strawberries, or you could turn it into a desert landscape and use uh, cactus and whatever in it. Looks really nice, so this is what the project looks like. Okay, this is my horse trough planter. And what this is made out of, it's made out of uh, recycled uh, cedar fence boards uh, with uh, a couple of uh, braces inside made out of some treated lumber so it won't rot. And uh, I use cedar because uh, cedar is naturally pest resistant and rot resistant. So it'll handle uh, being out here in the weather. Uh, and because it's in contact with the dirt and will get rained on and get a lot of moisture, it's not going to rot. So cedar's a good wood to use for this project. Uh, and uh, I happened to get these cedar boards from a friend of mine who was uh, building a cedar fence. He had more cedar boards than he needed. So I traded him a uh, case of beer uh, for his leftover cedar fence boards. Uh, and then we proceeded to drink that beer, and so it turned out to be a really good trade for me. So what this is, is it's a, it's a four foot by two foot trough. And as you can see, it's angled. You can see that it's angled on the sides uh, so that it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And it's angled this direction so that it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom. And it's, uh, each fence board is six inches. I used four of them, so it's two foot high and it's four foot wide. And since these fence boards are six foot long, that makes it so I don't have any waste. I can actually use one fence board for one front and one side and another fence board for another front and a side. And that way there's no waste. I'm just cutting off and using the entire fence board. And so I'm gonna show you how to build these. And you can see that I've got it kind of decorated up. I got this and planted up with some perennials. Uh, you could use, like I said, you could put this uh, for a garden bed if you wanted to put tomatoes, especially like uh, strawberry tomato or uh, yeah, cherry tomatoes would be real good in here. Uh, or you could plant just about anything you want in here. I put some perennials, and I've got some uh, plants that'll kind of spread and go over the edges here. These uh, Vinca minor plants, they'll grow out and they'll go over the edges and they'll grow down uh, and look like they're, the water's running over the edges of the trough. And then I got it decorated up. I put, found an old horseshoe and I put an old horseshoe on the front of it. Uh, and then this is my old pitcher pump. And I got that pitcher pump so it looks like it's running into that old horse trough. And uh, I'm gonna build another one over there on that side of the gate. And then I'm gonna fill these in with perennials and maybe some manuals and have these planters out here so that when someone pulls up to my gate, they'll have something to look at while they can't figure out how to get in my gate. No, just kidding. Uh, I have lots of family and friends that come and visit me all the time and so I was I wanted some planters out here instead of just planting in the soil because uh, the soil isn't the best around here and also it, it uh, makes it a little bit easier to keep the plants under control and, and maintain them and water them and things like that. Plus I think it makes the gate look really nice out here. So that's the project that I'm going to show you how to do. And this whole project, like I said, you can build it with uh, basic hand tools or power tools. Uh, it costs you about $20 if you go and buy the materials all new. If you have a friend with some cedar fence boards or you got some old fence boards laying around, you could use those or you could use some other recycled material. You could use barn wood or whatever you want to use. Now, I'm leaving this natural, uh, and uh, cedar has a... a a real nice patina to it. You can see it's got lots of knots and everything that makes it look really nice and old. And uh, over time, in a year or two, this will turn kind of a tan grayish color in the weather. And it'll look like it's been here a hundred years, and that's what I want. I want it to look real natural. But you can paint this, or you could seal it with some uh, stain or some sealer or some verithane or something like that. Decorate it up any way you want. Uh, the pitcher pumps, I'll tell you where you can get those. You can get those at Harbor Freight for about 20 bucks. Uh, go to harborfreight.com and you can order one of those if you want one of those. Or decorate it just any way you want. You can do painting on it or, or just whatever. They're just a nice little project for 20 bucks and about an hour's worth of work. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to build one of these now.
Okay folks, this is uh, what you're going to need for this project. You're going to need 10 cedar fence boards. And these are 6 foot long, flat edge cedar fence boards. Uh, you can get dog eared fence boards, but if you do that you're going to have to cut off the dog ear. Uh, so I recommend the flat edge. And uh, the dog ears are the ones that have the little notches at the corners. Uh, it'd be better to get the flat uh, end ones and you won't have to cut that off and then the sizes will all match to what I'm telling you. Uh, but if you have to use the dog ears, just adjust your measurements uh, accordingly. You will also need a 2 by 4 by 8 uh, foot long, what they call a stud. And these are, this one is pressure treated. You don't have to get pressure treated, but if you want it to last a long time, since it's going to be in contact with the dirt and it's going to get wet, a pressure treated will last a lot longer. If you're going to be using these around... Uh, vegetables and things like that, pressure treated isn't recommended because they might leach some of the chemical back into the soil and get into your plants. So use something besides pressure treated. You will need one 2x4x8. You will need 10 of the uh, 6 foot cedar fence boards. And for tools you're going to need a saw. And I'm going to use a skill saw here but you could do this with a hand uh, cross cut saw. You're going to need a uh, square of some type and that's what this is, a little cheap plastic square so that I can make straw, straight lines because I don't draw straight lines with a crap by myself. So I need a, a square. You will need a hammer. You will need a tape measure. You will need some nails and I recommend uh, a nail, oh similar to this, this is a roofing nail actually. It's got a big old head on it. Uh, that works really good in cedar to hold it in place. Smaller nails will pull through cedar because it's a soft wood, so get you some nails that have a bigger head on them like that, plus you, they kind of look good, they look old-fashioned once you put them in. You could use screws on this project, uh, I want mine to look old-fashioned, they didn't have screws uh, back when they used horse watering troughs, so, a horse, so screws might look a little bit funny, but if screws is what you got, you can use screws, and that'll work fine too. You will need glue, get you some good exterior wood glue. Don't use the type that's made for interior projects. It'll pull apart because when it gets wet it washes that glue off. Get you some good exterior wood glue uh, and you're going to use quite a bit of this so get you a pretty good sized bottle. Uh, the glue and the nails together are extremely strong bond. It'll hold this together for a lot of years. You will need another type of nail and what I'm using here is just some uh, extra paneling nails. These are a short nail and I'll just use these basically to tack a few uh, places together so if you got some short nails like this that would also help and uh, that's about it for tools and then of course you need your beverage of choice and uh, depending on how you measure uh, time this is a one hour project or about a six pack project so let's get busy the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to measure off some boards and cut them okay I'm going to cut the wood uh, first so I have everything cut down to size that I need do all my cutting at once so uh, on these cedar fence boards, you're going to cut eight of the cedar fence boards down to two feet. And so what you do is use your tape measure, measure down two feet, use your square, draw your line. You're going to cut these down so that you'll have a two-foot piece and a four-foot piece. One will be the long sides, one will be the short sides. On your 2 by 4 by 8 you're going to cut these down to 2 feet in length. So just do the same thing. Measure over 2 feet in length, cut each of them down, you'll get 4 2 foot lengths out of a 2 by 4 by 8. Those are going to be the internal corner braces for the watering trough. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut these down. Again, only cut 8 out of the 10 of the cedar fence boards because the other two are going to be longer and used for other purposes. Eight of them will be the sides, so let's get those cut. Okay, you can see what I've got here is four of the two foot lengths of the uh, cedar fence board, and I've got two of the uh, two foot lengths of the two by four. Now what you're going to do is you're going to measure over from the corner two and a half inches. Okay, that's going to give you the angle for the side of the box. So you're going to measure over two and a half inches. And then I just use one of the 2x4s as a straight edge and lay that from the corner up there. You can go right from the corner down to that mark and you're going to draw your line. As you can see over here, I've measured from the corner and I've laid that 2x4 down 2.5 inches in and I just drew my line along that. Okay, And that will give you two lines on your boards and you're going to cut 
right along that line and that will give you your angle so the bottom of the trough is narrower than the top. The top will be two foot wide, the bottom will be narrower than that. So now I'm going to cut those four boards. You're going to do this for both sides. Okay, here you can see that I've got the uh, ends of the trough cut and I've got the uh, two by four braces underneath. You can see that they project out from the bottom. That's to give that space so that uh, it'll raise it up a little bit off the ground to allow your water to drain out. Uh, and also you can use those to steady the, the trough when you put it down on the ground. If you need to, you can dig a little bit on one end or the other, kind of act like legs so you can steady it. You can see that uh, I just put those together at the same angle as I cut them from the top down so the base is narrow. And uh, all you got to do is remember at the top up here where the 2x4s go up to the top, just make sure that these ends down here of the 2x4s don't project past uh, the top of the barrel, otherwise you're going to have a hard time putting your uh, top rim uh, lip on the top. So make sure this 2x4 is at least an eighth of an inch back underneath the edge of this, okay? And then you just uh, lay those on there kind of like a puzzle, uh, and it should be narrow at the bottom and wide at the top. Now when you're putting these boards on, you want to make sure that you're gluing and nailing both. And uh, what you do is after you've got them set so that you know what your pattern is and everything, just lift the board up, put some glue along the edge, and then put two nails in. One nail up here, one nail down here, and just do, go on down. Slide your boards up nice and tight. Make sure the edges all match up as you're going along. And when it gets all done, it'll look like that, but it'll be all attached together. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this together and show you what that looks like, and that'll be one completed end. Okay, you can see that I have one end completed. You can see that it's narrow at the bottom white at the top. Each of the boards is glued and nailed with two nails to the 2x4s and you can see on the back side the two 2x4 two braces that run down on the, the inside of the boards. You can see that they're just underneath the, the top edge of those boards. That's all there is to building the sides. Now I'm going to go ahead and build the second side uh, and uh, get that done and then we'll put the uh, the fronts and backs uh, attached to these sides. So let's go ahead and build the second side uh, just the same way we did this one. Make sure that you're gluing and nailing uh, each of the cedar fence boards to the 2x4s as you go along. Okay, you can see I've got the two ends of the trough built and uh, they're identical. Wider at the top, narrow at the bottom. Now we're going to follow this same process to build the front and the back sides. What you need to do is set you out four boards that are the four foot length, match up the ends, and then you're going to draw your angle again. Again you're going to go two and a half inches inside on both ends. Two and a half inches inside on both ends, and then you're going to draw your line using a straight edge from the corner all the way down to that mark. That's what you're going to cut off. That'll give you the angle for the top so that it's narrow at the bottom and wide at the top. Now I've got those marks made on those four boards and I'm going to do the same thing on the front and the back. And I'm just going to cut right along that line on each of those boards and those are going to be the front and the back. And this is on the four foot length. So let's get that cut. Okay, I've got the uh, front side and back sides cut, and now what I'm going to do, I'm just using this other sideboard as a brace so it's at the top proper uh, height. Uh, that's not attached, okay? That board's just sitting on there. What I wanted to show you here is what you want to do is you want to match up your ends. You can see how that uh, top board matches up with the sideboard, and underneath that I'm going to, of course, lay a string of, of glue and then I'm going to nail this, one nail here, one nail here, and I'm just going to go right on down the side. First uh, I'll put the, the top board on on this side, and then I'll go over here and I'll move that board out to that end, and I'll do the same thing on that side. Uh, and that'll support it at the right angle. And then I'll just go right on down with the other three boards uh, attaching the front panel, and then I'll flip it over and I'll do the same thing on the other side. Remember, always glue and nail. Do one board first, attach both sides, and then do the rest of the three boards. You'll need to adjust your 2x4s in or out to make sure that your angles all adjust. And just remember that this front edge here 
should just overlap the end board, okay? Your front board should overlap your end board, and if you do that, and you glue it, and you nail it, then you got a nice uh, tight seal at the corner. All right, let's get that done. Okay, you can see that I've got one of the uh, front sides attached, and now we're gonna do the exact same thing to the back side, and uh, as you can see, it has a nice angle. Uh, it's wider at the top, narrow at the bottom. That's what we're after. And you can see the braces in the corners now. Okay? That's what gives it support in the corners. Now we're also going to add some braces to these long walls. I'm going to add two uh, braces to support those boards. Because if you don't support those boards, what's going to happen is those boards under the weight will bow and uh, the way to push them out of shape. We don't want that to happen, so we're gonna add some braces to the insides, and I'll show you when we get to that point. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this up, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing with those uh, cedar boards that are cut to an angle on this other side here, and we're just gonna attach them onto this other side, and we're just about done, folks. Okay, you can see I've got the uh, front and the back attached to the sides. Pretty nifty, huh? You can see that it's got a narrow angle at the bottom, wide angle at the top, on both the sides and the back. Okay? Pretty easy process. Now you could actually call this finished if you want, uh, but I'm going to add a top rim around this just to finish it off and make it look just a little bit nicer, and it will cover up those 2x4s that are in the corner so you don't see them. Now you don't need this top rim. Uh, but it just adds a little bit to it, makes it look a little bit nicer, and uh, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Now, as I'm building this, you may notice that some things aren't exactly perfect. You look over here, you can see that some of my edges don't match up perfectly. Down here, i got a little bit extra length on my board, okay? Don't worry about that stuff, okay? It's it, Remember, this is just a planter. Uh, it's, it's not meant to be completely perfect. Uh, I expect there to be some uh, warpage in the boards and things like that that make edges don't match up. Now the difference between a professional builder and an amateur is a professional builder has learned how to hide their mistakes better. That's all the difference is, okay? They just know how to hide their mistakes better. Now a professional builder would say, oh well I'd cover those corners up with another piece of board and make it look all nice and pretty. <laughs> this is just a planner, folks. One of the things that keeps people from building projects or learning how to build stuff is the fear that they might do something wrong. I want you to get over that fear and just go ahead and build. you got to start building stuff to learn how to do it correctly. So this is a good project, especially for beginners that maybe don't have a lot of experience building. This is an excellent project to start, okay? Because you're going to learn how to cut, you're going to learn how to measure, you're going to learn how to nail, you're going to learn how to saw. Those are all great things. And it's just a planter. Nobody's going to die if you put a, an edge wrong on here. And you can always pound it back loose and put it back together correctly if you make a mistake. So don't worry about all that. All we're doing is building a planter box here. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. All right? Now we're going to put a top rim on there. It'll kind of pretty it up make it look a little bit nicer. So let's get that built. And I'll show you how to measure and cut that. Now while I'm sitting here taking a little break, uh, I thought I'd show you the newest addition to my family. That's Taz. Hey, Taz, and she's a Black Lab Border Collie, an Australian Blue Healer, and we call her Tasmanian, Tasmanian the She-Devil, or Taz for short, and uh, you've met Wally before, he's my Black Lab and Border Collie, and uh, I had a female dog before named Wilma, and she got uh, parvo and passed away on me, so I had to get Wally a new playmate, I got old Taz here, and she gets a little bit older than I'll mate her and Wally and, and get some pups out of them. But she's a great looking little pup and a lot of fun to watch. Not real bright at this time. She eats bark and, and gets in my flower bed. But that's the newest addition to my family. Say hello, Taz. Okay, before we put this top rim on here, I thought I'd better uh, show you how we put the braces on the inside uh, just to hold those uh, side panels from moving in and out because they're a fairly long piece of board. If we don't put something in there to brace it, then the weight of the dirt will push those in and out and you'll have a gap show up after a while. So all I did is I uh, cut some two inch pieces of cedar board uh, out of one of the, the cedar boards I have left and I just uh, 
measured it so that it would fit inside the box and then you glue on both sides make sure that you put the glue on the wood okay and then we're going to use those uh, nails that i showed you okay those little uh, nails that i showed you that we use that are uh, paneling nails and uh, we're just going to go through both sides and it's a good idea if you go through both sides of the brace and go especially over this joint as you can see right here where my finger is make sure that you go on both sides of that joint right there and that'll keep this from pulling apart uh, from the weight of the of the uh, dirt that's inside here and we're gonna put four of them we're gonna put one on each side and what I did is I measured over 16 inches from one end and put a brace I measured 16 inches over from the other end and you'll have four braces on the inside uh, two on one side two on the other side okay so those are the braces okay folks I'm ready to put the last board on this horse trough planter now you can see what I've done is I've created a rim around the top here and that just kind of finishes it up hides those uh, braces that are inside the box so you won't see them and just kind of gives it a nice finished look now you want to remember that the sides are four feet long of the box and I wanted to extend this uh, this uh, top edge this rim that goes around it three quarters of an inch out from that so what I did is I measured this front board and that back board I measured them four feet and one and a half inches that way they would extend out three quarters of an inch past the end of the box okay so that gives me a three quarter inch lip all the way around the box and just kind of finishes it up makes it look nice okay so remember that when you're cutting this top rim make it four feet and one and a half inches now these top rim boards are actually just one one piece of the uh, cedar fence boards just ripped in half I just measured it, the, the fence board exactly in half drew a line all the way from one end to the other and then I just cut it with my saw all the way up and that gave me a nice uh, probably about a two and a half two and three quarter inch rim board to go on here and then the end pieces you just lay in place and I just uh, I put the side pieces on first and then I just eyeballed those end pieces I held them up there and I says okay that'll fit in there and I made my mark and I cut and I put those in there now the important part of putting these rim boards on is you got to remember to put your glue on okay it, because there's not much supporting them except that top edge and it's not very it's not very thick okay and the two by four is supported on the ends here so you want to make sure that you run a bead of glue all the way along underneath each of these boards all the way around the box on the top of this rim you want to run a bead of glue then where it attaches to the two by fours you want to put those big headed nails in like that okay and that'll keep them solid and then around the outside edge where it goes where it attaches to this board here then I use those smaller nails and I just tack it in a few places along the edge and with the glue the small nails and the big headed nails in the corners that's plenty enough to attach it once that glue gets set it's not going anywhere you won't get that pulled back apart so then you want to take your boards and you just want to fit them into place and line up the corners and the edges you can see how they line up there and they line up there and then you want to make sure that your glues underneath there first put that down put your nails in now once that's attached your box your planter box is finished okay and that's all there is to it you want to screw those or uh, nail those down attach that top rim so it finishes up and then your planter box is finished so here in a minute I'll go ahead and attach that board then I'll move that out where I'm gonna place it next to my fence and I'll start showing you how we filled up full of dirt that's the last step to this because uh, that's kind of important to keep your box from moving around so I'm gonna go ahead and attach this last uh, rim board here okay folks as you can see I've got the planters in place uh, there's the one that I finished earlier there's a new one that we finished together 
Now, uh, when you put these planters in, hopefully you won't have some of the problems that I have. My land right here is really unlevel. So I had to uh, raise it up with a 4x4 four four on one side just to make it level. Uh, if your land's level, you won't have that problem. But those legs make it so you can adjust that planter. Now, a little bit of uh, advice when you go putting your soil in uh, is to put some rocks underneath it first. And then either put some black plastic underneath to keep the weeds from coming in underneath. Or if you're using the bags of soil, put your first couple of bags in and then just leave the bags right in the bottom of your box. As you can see, that's what I did here. I just left those plastic bags right inside the bottom of the box. That'll keep the weeds from coming up from underneath. Don't worry, the water will still find a way around it. It'll still escape. And uh, it's going to take quite a few bags of soil to fill this up. So what you might want to do is fill it up about a third of the way with rocks and then fill it up the rest of the way with soil. That'll still give you plenty of soil for your plants since these are pretty deep uh, boxes. I'm going to go ahead and fill them up with some sphagnum moss and then I'll fill them up the rest of the way with soil. Okay, so that's the project there, folks. Uh, as you can see, there's your planter box uh, and what it'll look like. And that's the horse trough planter. And when you get finished, get it all decorated up, they look real nice. I'm going to be adding more plants onto this one. Now here's the deal. Uh, I made this video so that you could uh, have a, a project to do uh, around your homestead. And uh, all I ask in return is if you make one of these boxes, if you make one of these uh, horse trough planters, send me a picture. Uh, tell me your name and I'll put you in my next ebook to show people uh, what your design came out. And decorate it any way you want. Do it, do it, make it personal. Make it your own style. Fix it up nice. Send me a picture of it. And then I'll include it in my ebook and that way people can see how they turn out. And they can see that it can be done by just about anybody. Okay? Well, there's the final project, folks. I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, I hope you'll go ahead and build you some uh, horse trough planters. And uh, that's it, folks. Thank you for joining me. And uh, look forward to our next project together. Please uh, subscribe to my website. And uh, visit my website, www.simplesolarhomesteading.com. Have a great day, folks. Thank you.